Welcome back to the Therapists Deserve Abundance podcast. My name is Dr. TK, licensed clinical psychologist and the number one therapist business coach. So in today's episode, I really want to focus on entering into this new year, 2022. And one of the biggest questions that have come up in our adult therapist community is what do I ask my CPA or my tax person? Um, What should I focus on in the meeting with them? Because one of the things that I encourage all of my students to do is actually do what's called fourth quarter planning. Because in business, the results that you want in your business in the first quarter will be predicated based off of what you do in the fourth quarter to set the tone for your entire next year. And so in today's episode, we will be covering three things um, that I want to share with you um, that I would want you to go share with your CPA. So let's go ahead and dive in, okay? So um, the first thing that I want to talk about is um, the importance of knowing your vision and then also sharing your vision with your CPA or tax uh uh, you know, prepare. Okay. And so let me just also state, you know, some people ask, what is the difference between a CPA and a regular tax person? Should I get one over the other? And that really depends on your entity type, your assets. What are all the things that you want a tax person to look at, evaluate? Do you want suggestions? Do you want to be able to work with someone throughout the year? And maybe it may also determine what type of relationship you may have had with the person who has prepared your taxes for the last few years. And so for myself, I decided to choose a CPA. Once I owned a home, I had two corporations, I had a lot of streams of income, and me just simply going to an office or to a person that I knew every year, that wasn't enough because I had you know, a lot of questions around taxes, um, hiring team members, projections for my business and things like that. So that really required me to sit down and have meetings with a CPA and a CPA is a certified, you know, tax professional. Okay. So the first thing that I would encourage you to do is share your vision. So, um, with sharing your vision, you want to identify on a sheet of paper first, um, in our dope therapist Academy and in our elite coaching program, this is known as our vision blueprint for five or the next 10 years, if they're either growing or scaling their business. And so with your stream or streams of income, you want to identify for the next upcoming year, especially in fourth quarter planning, what products or product or services will you be offering next year? And you want to list those out. The easiest way to do this, if you're a visual person, is to draw a stool. So typically the stool has a top, and then it has multiple legs. So with the top of the stool, the name of your business, for example, Branding for Abundance would go at the top of the stool because that's the name of my company. But then under that would be coaching services, speaking engagements, online store, and then any other different stream of income. Now, for those of you who are in our dope therapist community, in any of our coaching programs or have graduated from them, you may be wondering, well, do I have a different leg for all of the levels of programs that I offer? And the answer is yes and no. Um, Yes, in terms of you have one leg for coaching and then under that leg, it may spiral out to multiple legs because coaching is the main stream. I'm doing coaching services with therapists, but then under that one stream, you have different types of programs. But nevertheless, all of the funding, the revenue, it goes into one account, if that makes sense. So you first want to identify what are your streams of income now, and then what will they be at least in the next five years, because this can also help a tax professional identify and or give you tips about, are you in the right entity type, right? Do you need to go from W9 uh, sole proprietor into an LLC or S Corp, depending on your revenue? Um, Another thing you want to think about as it relates to your vision is your revenue projections. So if you are seeing clients or you have customers, how many clients Um, do you plan on seeing for the next year? And then of course you would break that down quarterly. That can be for a therapy practice, a group practice, but we also have to look at units being sold. Units being sold or seats being sold is for me, CE workshops, live events. 
if I have, which I've had in the last two years, a yearly annual VIP therapist uh, experience in Vegas, we know that we can seat maximum about eight to nine people in that room for them to be able to be around a conference room. And then I'm in the front so that we can engage, right? So if I know that I have, let's just say eight seats, and I know that I'm going to have that event sometime in 2022, I'm going to make sure that I identify that as a stream of income under events. But then that may be a live event versus a CE workshop, which is a virtual event. So just like coaching, it can be under one stream of income that branches out into too many legs, but I have to identify, I should identify what is my goal number of units sold, customer served, client served, and then how does that correlate with the price? point to then give me a projection. You want to always go into a new year with goals. The last thing you want to do as a business owner is go with the flow because all of a sudden you may find yourself not making the right amount of revenue that you want to make. And as a coach, I'm then going to ask you, well, what was your goal? Did you sit down and actually create a goal for yourself? Okay. So um, outside of revenue projections and streams of income, then of course you bring all of this together. What are your yearly goals in terms of milestones? So we're talking about a five-year vision, but then I want you to reverse engineer it and go backward. What yearly goals um, do you need to make for you to get, you know, uh, 20% closer to that five-year goal? So if I know that I want to have a, um, revenue projection of a million dollars or $500,000 by my fifth year. And I just started off in my business. I also want to serve a thousand therapists, or maybe I want to serve, you know, a total of 50 clients throughout the year, then I'm going to have to do my math. And then I'm also going to have to look at my lifestyle, um, sacrifices that I may need to make in the interim. And then I identify similar to a smart goal, the milestone, when do you want to meet these goals, provide dates. And you can actually give this to your CPA. So to give you an example of how this happened for me successfully is when I was about six, seven months pregnant, I knew that my business for the upcoming year, when my son was expected to be born, I knew that my business would have a boom right after I got off maternity leave because I knew what work I was doing while sitting on the couch because I was taking off work at five months, you know, being pregnant and being on bed rest. So I did telehealth, but I also knew that I was building my coaching business. At that time, I had only had one, um, you know, dope therapist uh, academy as a group. And I knew that I clearly wanted to have more. I wanted to serve more. I wanted to make a bigger impact. So what I did one day, no instruction from my coaches. I just, I'm a vision board person. So I say, you know what? I'm gonna make a vision board for my CPA. So I'm a techie person. I like Google Drive. I went on Google Docs. I created a, you don't have to do all this, but I created something that looks like a map. And I just said like my five-year vision. And then I had my different legs of my streams of income. I did projections of my Shopify store, of my therapy practice, of my coaching business, and any other streams that I had at the time, like uh, trading and things like that. And then I took it to her and I said, this is my goal. This is my five-year plan. And this is my 10-year plan because I like broke all of them down and I emailed it to her. And then she said, okay, when do you go back to work? What is your revenue now? What do you expect? your revenue to be in the next 12 months. And so I emailed her back with the numbers and she said, okay, when you hit this benchmark in terms of revenue based off of my business, so I'm not going to share the exact number. You need to talk to your CPA about that. She looked at how much time was left in the year. Does that make sense in terms of signing up to get a S corp? Because as a psychologist in California, I need to have an S corp. I cannot have an LLC. So she did her homework. I did my research because you as a mental health provider also need to understand the ethical laws with your board. Okay. And I know my board of California for psychologists. And so she came back and said, once you hit this revenue goal, then we're going to incorporate you. And that's exactly what happened. I came to her a few months later and said, this is how much I made. This is how much I can project based off payment plans. And then this is how much I'm going to do in the next quarter. And she said, okay, let's file the paperwork. And my corporation for branding for abundance was created at the end of December, 2018. 
Okay. So it's still fairly new. And before that, I was really just pushing money through my W-9, but we're going to talk about it in a moment. You also want to talk to your CPA or your tax person about tax liability. So number two, you want to talk to your CPA about wealth accumulation, wealth accumulation. So there's three areas, tax liability, investment, and bookkeeping, meaning keeping track of your numbers. So with tax liability, you want to ask questions about what can you write off? What should you be writing off? Especially in these days where most people are choosing to still work from home or just not have clients in their office or customers in their office. And so For example, I had three offices, meaning I had one main office and then I was subleasing two other offices in a virtual space because at one point I had a group practice. I just did not give up the leases. And a lot of the therapists in the area wanted to sublease for me and I had, you know, furnished them and everything else. And two of them were window offices and another one was an internal office. So I was subleasing these offices to the therapist. And then when this great era happened, I shortly had to decide what to do with my office space. So what I chose to do is luckily um, two of the offices, the leases were up. My office, I had another few months because I had been in that particular space for about five to six years. I worked it out with the office manager that if someone was looking for a window space, can you ask them to take over my lease? And therefore they won't penalize me for ending my lease about two to three months early. So they actually found someone to take over the lease and then they just, you know, made another lease for them. So what does that mean in terms of tax liability? Typically I would run those as expenses, which equated to about $25,000 a year for three different offices offices. However, when I move into my home and I'm 100% working from home, I no longer have that write-off. I only have um, the square footage of the physical office space that I'm currently in, which is the size of a pretty decent sized bedroom. However, it's not the same. Okay. And so you want to ask your tax person, give you a list of write-offs because odds are, I guarantee it, you're missing something. You may think that just something is supposed to go through your personal checking account when you should be also swiping your card or you should be swiping your card for your business checking account. Um, Number two is investment. And so what can you invest in to become a better business owner? This is something that you want to think about on your own first, especially in fourth quarter planning for the next year. What do you need to learn next year to become a more successful business owner? Do you need to learn email marketing? Do you need to learn how to host virtual events? Do you have to learn how to create... um, you know, uh, digital products, online courses, webinars, what type of coaching do you need? Have you done your homework? How much does it cost? So like if you're a student and you're in my program, I typically will educate my students on the different levels. But then when it comes time for the doors to be open, unless you ask, I will not typically release the price, but at least you know when the doors are going to open. And in my community, we typically have released this information in the past. So most of the students have seen it, even though they may not have signed up for it or they may not have been ready for it because they're still in the growth phase of their business, which is the academy. So if you know that you're in a program and it costs you $2,000 to invest in to get whatever you got, you know, online course. And then you know that, to get the next level information, maybe to be in a year long program or to go to an live event, a three day conference may cost you $5,000. A one year program may cost you 10 or $15,000, whatever the price cost will be. You should write it down. It should be on your goals list. There should not be a time that somebody, somebody's ad stumbles across your Instagram feed and you say, Oh, I think I need that. Then you get trigger happy. Then you purchase the product or service. Then you want a refund because then you have time to sit down and realize you're not there yet. You're nowhere near there yet. You need to do some other things before you invest in that product or that service like coaching programs. So I'm asking you for fourth quarter planning to really sit down and ask yourself, where do I want to be at the end of next year? And then what do I need to learn to get there and who can give it to me? Because I do believe in alignment and faith and laws of attraction, all those things be a magnet to what you want. And sometimes, or I believe all the time, the teacher will appear, the right teacher will appear once you get clear on what you need. So what can you invest in next year to become a better business owner? And then make sure you have that conversation with your tax person so that they can also share with you how to classify it 
in your bookkeeping. So with bookkeeping, you definitely either want to do it yourself. You can get QuickBooks. You can um, keep track of your expenses. If you don't have a lot of influx of revenue coming in right now, you can create an Excel sheet. But the bottom line is you want to keep track of all of your expenses throughout the entire year, create a money date, a money day, and make a date with your money. What you pay attention to will grow. And so I look at my balances across all my accounts every single day because I have start learning in the last 60 days what my trends are in terms of revenue because I do host live events. I do um, plan you know, uh, other mini live events beyond my current clients, but more so with clients who are interested in my mastermind program that I have for therapists. And so I like to do sneak peek events like, hey, come spend two or three days with me in Vegas, you know, and let's do this together so that I can show you how you can have a transformation right now. But you can also learn what the mastermind students are learning throughout the year as a sneak peek, like in 48 hours, right? So they're able to walk away with something, but then they're also able to see what else is possible for them to learn to get better and bigger in their business, okay? So with bookkeeping, you wanna make sure that you're classifying your money going out and money coming in correctly so that you can decrease your tax liability. Tax liability is at a job, you get taxed on the front end. So if you make $50,000, you may only bring home about $33,000, dollars It really depends on your dependents and other money being taken out of your uh, check, right? Like 401k and stuff like that. So let's just say you made $50,000 at a job salary, but your take home is $35,000. When you are a business owner, okay, understanding your numbers, your projected revenue is $50,000, but because you're able to write things off in your business, that of course you're using for your business. So do this ethically, right? Walk, walk in integrity in your business and talk to your tax person. You actually are only responsible for taxes. And disclaimer, I am not a tax professional. I'm just letting you know what's been shared with me and what we do in our company. But disclaimer, I'm not a CPA, not a tax person, not a financial consultant or advisor, okay? But if I made $50,000 in a year, but I had $20,000 in appropriate write-offs that was ran through my tax person. They approved it and all those other things. And they were running my numbers throughout the entire year. That means that I'm going to be taxed in my business on the remaining amount. So one of the biggest benefits of being a business owner is that you're taxed on the back end after expenses has been removed versus at a job, you're taxed on the front end and that's what you're responsible for. Okay. So lastly, number three is communication expectations. What is the coverage or services that you will get from a tax person or CPA? And also what are their fees? So with expectations, you want to know upfront before you sign a retainer fee or pay um, beyond a consultation, which is the purpose of a consultation, which you may have to pay for, is how much do you want to communicate or do you feel like you need to communicate with the tax professional? And then what packages do they have to match that? Now, sometimes because we don't know things, we may assume we need to talk to somebody every single week, like a business coach, um, but we don't, okay? If you are given instructions, kind of like an online course, and then you go and you do your homework appropriately and in order in, in the way that they give it to you, and of course, you ask them questions if you get stuck. You shouldn't have a problem in terms of needing to talk to them every single week. You have to learn how to trust yourself, but also trust the person that you hire. So how much communication do you have and then how? Do you have Zoom meetings? Do you talk on the phone with them? Do you exchange via email? And what do you need? OK, so you want to get that up front. Um, secondly, is what are the coverage of services? For example, are they going to cover your business and or business expenses? Um, do they meet with you monthly, quarterly or annually? Um, what does it give you a forecasting of how much you're going to talk about the revenue that you're going to generate next year? Are they able to look back at your tax, your previous tax years and look at tax liability to see? and make sure that everything was okay. Like what does it cover, okay? Um, so always get a brochure or something they can email you, especially after a consultation so that you can have in writing what you get and then you can be accountable for the decision to decide if you wanna go with that person. And then lastly is fees. How are you charged? Are you charged by the hour? Do you have a retainer? Is it monthly, quarterly, or annually? What are you charged so that again, you can write this in 
your expenses because this is a professional service that helps your business run better. Okay. So we've talked about a lot of things today. We've talked about, um, you know, creating some type of five year vision for your business. We've talked about, um, expectations, communication with your CPA. What is the difference between a CPA and tax person? Um, and really just being open to what is possible of how your business can grow. But of course, with help, unless you do taxes yourself. So if you've loved this information and you are a therapist looking to be surrounded around like-minded individuals in which you want to be able to meet in a virtual space and have a good time, like at a virtual party and grow or scale your business. You want to maybe meet me live in person at one of these sneak peek mastermind VIP therapist experiences, or you just want to get business affirmations every day, Monday through Friday to get you motivated to start your day and be 1% better every day. So I want to gift you with my freebie library that has some cool manifestation and abundance hacks in there. It also has some um, branding and marketing tips. I also, like I mentioned, I text everybody in my text community, uh, business affirmations Monday through Friday. And then of course, I love to connect with other therapists. And so if you text the word abundance to 310-388-8603, All you have to do is put in your basic information, name, phone number, give us permission to text you. You will get a confirmation back and boom, there you have it. You will get another, you will get a text message the next business day by 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So I really hope that you have enjoyed this episode. If you know of a therapist that needs to hear this information, another business owner, it would be my honor for you to share that with them. My impact is to serve as many therapists as possible to get this information out because we know that this information was not taught to us in graduate school. Please make sure that you head down to the show notes, check out all the resources that I have um, available to you, like the freebie library. And of course, the phone number, don't forget to text me. And if you could, I would greatly appreciate it if you can leave me a five-star review and let me know what was your biggest takeaway. I will see you in the next episode. Bye. 